Welcome to the Alien Probe Podcast. Black-eyed children are part of a legend of supposed paranormal entities that have a childlike teenage appearance ranging between the ages of 6 and 16. The black-eyed children have pale skin and black eyes who are reportedly seen begging, hitchhiking, hoping a poor soul will pick them up or waiting on the doorsteps of residential homes asking to come in. These are the scariest black-eyed children's stories. Here today is Deb. How's it going, Deb? It's going good, Doug. What's new? Oh, you know, it's just another fun day in the neighborhood. Went for a little walk this morning, got some Starbucks, so we're ready to do our podcast. Took the dogs for a little walk. Went shopping yesterday, got Doug an alien to go in his backyard. Yeah, I, I, got, a little, I got a little metal alien at the craft fair. And, um, you know, it, it, it was pretty, it was pretty nice. And, um, you know, with that, I, every time I go, we go through these things, we find someone that has something to do with aliens and we, <laughs> I go, yeah, listen to the alien pro podcast. They have, we have to like write it down and they have to like search on it on, on their phone. So, uh, producer Robert, kudos. Now we have a QR code. Well, we putting the Q, well, we're having business cards made. So we have something that. Um, we can bring it up. I know it's not technologically advanced like some, but it's, it's pretty good. Uh, Robert did a great job, loaded everything on the QR. So be making some nice square business cards with the logo and the QR code so people can just scan it. Uh, inevitably people want to, you know, would, would like to at least check it out and say, Hey, I met that guy. So, um, you know, so yeah, he put the QR code together. We've got, um, Mitsunara our uh, checked in with Shell. We, we, we continually try to find the Flatlanders episode. So, um, you know, it's uh, Shelly. I, 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 my brother Kevin th- it sent me a note and said, "Oh, it's it's on Facebook. Listen to the episode, the Flatlanders. This is the documentary of Flatlanders, um, where they're trying to prove that the Earth is flat by doing a bunch of." Um, I don't want to say Skinwalker Ranch related because we like Shelley Lewis. So um, we're hoping that it's going to be, um, you know, at least, you know, somewhat proving that we, we can't leave the atmosphere. So, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm very curious to know. And a lot of I mean, people that don't believe Deb even, you know, they still want to watch the documentary. Of course they want so, to watch the documentary. Yeah. We, we searched for an hour Friday night trying to find, evidence of the but now we know that it's not quite out yet there's there's some legal issues and we will be told when it's coming out so that we can watch it yep and uh, so yeah the flatlanders episode we've got a, a sponsorship inquiry which we may be rolling in a sponsor um we'll have news on that on the next episode so that's that's pretty exciting stuff there but today we're talking about the black the be well, BEKs, they call them, but they're black-eyed children, black-eyed... Kids. Um, you know, yeah, kids, children, whatever. But uh, what's this all about, Deb? Well, the tabloid covered coverage of these creatures um, goes back to... Uh, it says that they started in the 1980s. Um, but most sources indicate the legend originated from 1996, posting by Brian Bethel. What, wait, have you... Did you hear... You gave me this... To, as your, as right. your, um, it was on, it was a Facebook. Did you post. know this in the eighties? Have you heard of it? I've never heard of this. No, before. no, I hadn't. No, this is, I subscribe to weird history on Facebook. And when you subscribe to weird history, you, you get, get all weird, kinds of cool stuff. You get yeah. weird history. And so this Texas reporter, um, he wrote this on a quote, ghost related mailing list. I'm, I guess in a ghost related mailing list. Well, in 1996, you couldn't, you know, there was no internet post. You were just the GRM. Well, I guess there wasn't, there wasn't internet in 1996, but you know, you were on not like there is now. Dial up, and nobody, nobody could use the phone while you were. On <laughs> I used to get in trouble because you know, I need the phone. I need to use the phone. You're on the internet. What looking at? So we're going to talk about Brian Bethel in a minute, um, but these. Um, They've become their, you know, these are really popular stories. Um, he also told his story on um, a reality TV series, Monsters and Mysteries in America. Wow. Well, see that one? I haven't seen that. That episode. was in 2012. Um, that's Abilene Reporter. So this is a Texas thing. At least this portion of it is, right? Right. 
And then um, there was a 2013 episode of MSN Weekly Strange that featured black eyed children it, also. Uh, there was a 2012. The oh, that's the, okay. Oh, 2012, the there was a horror film, Black Eyed Kids, um, produced with Kickstarter funding. Um, comment, the director commented that the creepy children were, quote, an urban legend that's been floating around on the internet for years now. And um, during a week in September of 2014, the British tabloid Daily Star ran three front page stories about alleged sightings of black eyed children connected to the sale of a supposedly haunted pub in Staffordshire. The paper claimed a shocking rise in sightings around the world. Well, um, every time you mention something, all of a sudden everybody starts looking it, for it. Yeah. It's like UFOs. All of a sudden people are looking, wait a minute. You know, I, I uh, you know, saw UFOs. In fact, um, the gentleman that called me is an old, old friend of mine that called me for the sponsor um, gig stated that he lives up in uh, Nevada. And uh, he says they see weird stuff in the sky all the time. Now, there's a lot of experimental aircraft stuff going on, obviously. But he lives in North, I think, Sint, in the Reno area. I mean, mm -hmm. Vegas is where Area, the Vegas area is closer to where Area 51 is. But he lives up in, I think, the middle to northern part of it. He, mm -hmm. he says they see weird stuff. And they don't That's really know cool. just... what it is. And I said, well, yeah, bust out with the camera, send us some pictures. Yeah, don't just look at them. But as you as you know, filming, we're going to. Yeah. Gonna, regress here a little bit as you know trying to shoot pictures of uh things in the sky as witnessed by you last weekend <laughs> of me trying. shooting pictures of the f-16s uh in the uh, the the thunderbirds i know you're not a big thunderbird fan i know you're, you're i'm a blue angels fan myself but frankly i think don't they do the same thing no blue angels are better they're better they're just better or are just they better. cuter? Are they the, the pilots? They just cuter? seem like they do more crazy stuff. I mean, I've yeah. seen the the Blue Angels almost on the ground. Yeah. And the Thunderbirds are more, you know, they just seem like they do a crazy flying stuff. But the Blue Angels, I mean, they fly like they're touching each other. Yeah. And last week they flew. The Thunderbirds flew all around our house for a very long time while our dog hid in the our bathroom. Our dog hid in the bathroom. <laughs> Our bad ass German Shepherd hid in the bathroom. He still gets nervous every time a plane. Now a passenger jet out. flies over and he freaks out. So yeah, this is, wasn't quite the uh, crazy an, you know snarling animal that I thought we were going to oh, get. No. But uh, now he's just a love and uh, help me. He does not. He does not <laughs> like noises. He will hold his pee all night if there's one firework <laughs> goes off. Yeah. So. um... It says that um, ghost hunters believe black-eyed children to be extraterrestrials or vampires or maybe ghosts. Uh, science writer Sharon Hill was unable to find any documentation of black-eyed children's encounters um, and concluded that the tales are um, passed on as friend of a friend ghost stories. You know, campfire story stuff to... My friend just, saw this. Yeah, typical, is is? typical yeah. spooky folklore stories. Well, it's like on Facebook when somebody says, my friend's cousin's uncle's nephew had this happen to him, so you better remember the... Was it the needles in the gas pump? People would put hypodermic needles in the handle so that you'd cut your cell, you know, and get poked with a... Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't remember the gas pump one. And when you were... If you're at a gas station, somebody will sneak into your back seat if you're not looking all the time and then they murder you on the way out of the gas station. Well, yeah, that could, and you should be careful of that. Why? You know? When do you leave your car? I don't leave my car. You leave it when you get gas and then somebody sneaks into the... You know, you got a four-door... You know, I stay right the there. They're not, and I don't get gas in the dark. That's just scary. <laughs> Only during the day. <laughs> I don't go Only out. I don't go out day. at night. You know that. Um, so now we're going to look at um, Brian Bethel's encounter because this is the one that supposedly brought this to light in 1996. This, real quick, since we're talking about ghosts, I have to tell you about something that happened last night. Oh, great! Was this the cobra? <laughs> <laughs> that was a dream. Okay. I was being chased by a giant cobra. You know, yeah, that's how bizarre I am. Uh -huh. um, I was sitting in the recliner watching Chuck Norris in Breaker Breaker 1970. You know what? Okay. It was terrible. But, you know, there was, I, you know, th it was all the movies I might like. Of course it was. On, on, you know, Xfinity. It says, yeah. since you watched 
and, and to watch, it had watched, nothing to do with anything I watched. Since you watch horrible it's, movies, but check this one out. Xfinity seemed to think that I might like that, and I'm sure I've watched it before mm. at some point. So I'm reclining in the chair, you know, I'm kicking it, watching the thing, and all of a sudden, the chair turns <laughs> and bounces against the table. And I'm like, Oh, that's weird. Uh -huh. And I thought, you know, things are uneven in this house. Right. So the house tilted. The house is probably tilted mm -hmm. or got tilted or something happened to make it tilted. Yeah. So I kept, I, it did this and I actually said, okay, I'm trying to watch a movie. If you're pushing my chair, stop it. Because I'm trying, because it's, you know, uh -huh. turning away from, you know, the TV because it's kind of hard to see that TV. Yeah, the 75-inch TV is. <laughs> It's really difficult for you to find. Which wall is so I not? I, but I had to move my head to see oh the picture. It was inconvenient. To, you had to move. So, um, yeah, I did that three or four times, and then I moved, and then after, like, the fourth time, it stopped moving. So bear in mind, if you do that, and it's something, I don't know, it's, I don't know, it's, and then something really smelled really bad in there. I okay, don't know. You're, you're sleeping with it. You're, you're in a room with a 13-year-old dog. There's a lot of bad smells. I know. It could have been the dog, I guess, but I don't know. It was like, okay, a really bad smell. My chair is moving. Or could it have been the hot dogs you ate for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> the hot dogs and screwdrivers. <laughs> what could go wrong? God. Okay. That's all right. Back to Black Eyed Kids. This is supposed to be scary, not gross. <laughs> all, right. all right. So now we have Brian Bethel. He's from Abilene, Texas. And he has the reputation for being the first person to post an encounter with black eyed children on the internet. Because, you know, we just got the internet about that time. Um, Everything was being posted on the internet. His account of the black eyed children starts with him sitting in his car, writing a check. Does anybody remember writing a check? <laughs> yeah, to his, yeah, to to his, his internet, internet to his ISP. service provider, like they would ever accept a check these days. As he's writing the check, he is startled by the sound of someone knocking on his car window. He looks up and notices two children wearing hoodies and staring at him blankly. I just find it weird that he's sitting in his car writing a check. Was he going to, I guess, going to mail it out? Throw it in the envelope mail it from there? I don't know. I, may, he may, he might, I mean, you It's funny to... how he just he mentioned what he was doing. Okay, because he was, right. So he was looking down. He, wasn't, he didn't see them approach. Right. He just got the... Sorry, on the, I'm the straight down in this thing. And... He looks up and he notices these children wearing hoodies and he describes feeling an unexplainable jolt of fear run straight through his whole body. Probably dropped his pen and everything. Well, they yeah. seem to look, now you got to look for your now pen. Now you got to look for your pen. What, what if it goes under the, the gas pedal and then you can't go? You know, oh my God. And it's, it's black and it's the same color as the floor and you can't see it. Yeah. Well, they seemingly look just like kids. He could tell that something was definitely wrong with them. Although he couldn't quite place his finger to his unexplainable fear, then he mustered up the courage to roll down the car window. Just enough to talk with the kids. I put in your lips up. Blah, 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 what are you going I wouldn't even have rolled the window down. I, out have been, I wouldn't have rolled the window. And he probably had a crank, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just enough to talk with the kids, figure out what did well, they do. They had the electric to? windows in 96. But it, they did, but he said roll, so you know. All right, all right. Um, isn't it funny, though, that he... If, no matter how long it's been since they had those cranked, the international sign for roll down your window, it's still moving it's your still hand around. It's still moving your hands yep. in circles. Because no, if you just go like pushing a button, nobody can. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if I do this to a woman, she's not going to oh, like no, it. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that push down sign. No. But I know all of my dogs wish I still had the roll up windows because I have caught in every dog head. <laughs> the electric window. Oh, yeah. Poor. <laughs> every dog I've heard go, ah, oh, just, oh, shit, oh, shit. Down, down, down. No. SPCA is going to be coming after you. I know. <laughs> the oldest one of the black eyed children was first to speak and asked if they could have a ride home. He claims they were going to watch a movie, but had forgotten their money. So he says, We need a ride home because otherwise, if we walk back home, we won't make it back to the theater in time to watch the movie. And uh, at this point, Bethel can see the bar movie marquee and he's kind of questioning their story because. Um, so we asked him, what movie are you going to see? And they said they wanted to see Mortal Kombat. And he knew. I'm not sure why he knows this. Have you seen Mortal Kombat? No. Oh, he I says that the, the um, Mortal Kombat started playing like an hour ago. 
So we continue to have a little more doubts about their stories. Well, that's when they put the little sign pieces up on the marquee and they had I, these times. Remember that? I know, but he says that he acts like he just knew. It's like, I know my Well, he could see the marquee. It has the time. Remember, in the back in the day, they had the starting yeah. times right up on yeah. that. Unless I hallucinated that they had. Or maybe he's the voice of movie phone or whatever that was. Remember when you could call that number and it would tell you all yeah. the movie times? Yeah. Um, so then he's sitting in his car and he notices that they're they're talking and acting like they're way older than what they look to be. And they, the voice of the oldest one says, just let us in. We'll be gone before you know it. And we're going to our mother's house, he continued. Every word coming from his boy, the boy's mouth sent a shiver down Bethel's spine. So as he's trying to make out their faces, he notices their soulless, pitch black eyes, completely void of any life. It's weird. That's Do creepy. they look like this? Yes, just like your alien. <laughs> Alien eyes. Got dug a, an Apple Watch. <laughs> and I put an alien on He's it. He's got his animated alien. <laughs> yeah. Look, when you touch it, it does where it starts. I know. It does where it starts. Okay, stop playing. At me. Stop playing with that. <laughs> God. It winked at me. Stop playing with that. <laughs> Bethel stopped trying to hide his fear anymore, and he's completely terrified. One of the boys continued to talk and said, Come on, mister. We won't hurt you. Oh, yeah, at that point, I'm out right there. Yeah, anytime they say, Dumb, I'm not going to hurt you. I know, yeah, you're going to hurt me. <laughs> you have to let us in. We don't have a gun. The oh, we don't have it. a gun. We don't have a gun. Or a slingshot in my back pocket. <laughs> the more the boy spoke, the more he convinced Bethel to get the hell away from there. <laughs> and quickly. Before the boy could say anything more, he threw the car into reverse and sped off, still being watched by the boys <laughs> demanding to be let in. You Hopefully see he didn't run over any other kids getting to the movie because it's about to start. As he took <laughs> off, he gave one last glance at the boys, but they vanished before he even got out of the parking lot. So remember they said, we'll be gone before you know it. Yeah, and they were. <laughs> but what, what are they going to do? Okay, well, maybe... Uh, Maybe it'll come to light as to what actually happens when somebody lets them in. I well, I don't know if we, if any, as we've gone through, let's see what happens here. All right. Well, now we have the boy, the at, the boy at the door. We have a picture of a boy that doesn't look the least bit scary. He's a little, yawning. Little, little <laughs> dwarf with his, look at his little little Elmer Fun hat on. He's so cute. You'd let the little Elmer Fun boy Looks in, like right? Luke Combs guys. Was, anyway, yeah. <gasps> you don't. The boy at the Just door a uh, is a Craigslist post. I never knew you could do this. I, I guess they have chatty things about on Craigslist. Women who is, uh, about women. Craigslist posts about a woman. Okay, go ahead. Who was not just... Okay. What was she doing? <laughs> she was... And don't make any disgusting remarks about dresses and underwear like you did earlier. <sighs> this I is a family show. I don't get to have any <laughs> This woman described how she was having trouble. <laughs> <laughs> with someone knocking on her door around 3 a.m. And her daughter, thinking that someone wanted to break in the house, she told her mom to call the police. I yes. guess she didn't. Because she didn't. <laughs> as days went by, the random knocking at the door late at night continued. All the people on po on Craigslist, um, I guess they're all... It's in, a forum. It's a little bro. chat, it's yeah. A they tried to rationalize. You've this. never looked at Craigslist. I have never. Don't you buy Craigslist. anything? No, not off Craigslist. Do you sell anything? You sell my stuff. <laughs> yeah. I have never knew about Craigslist till I met you. You better look on it, see what I'm doing with all your stuff. Yeah. You know, I could only be giving you half the money. As long as I'm getting money, I'm happy. <laughs> And we never, we didn't die through all of that because you never know. <laughs> yeah, you never, yeah, a black eyed kid could be going to buy something. So um, the people in the Craigslist post tried to rationalize by asking if she had any pets, that maybe that could be the problem. I guess maybe people knocking on the door and shut your damn dog up because I can see getting that. Or, question. you know, keep your kids quiet on that birthday party yeah. from two doors up. You know? She, uh, The woman had no pets and lived only with her daughter in a rented apartment. And I guess her daughter doesn't bark, so she's... You have She's to have good. dogs. Everybody out there, get a dog. Get a dog. Even if he's scared of, you know, the Everything. Thunderbirds. <laughs> he does bark. And now airliners. He does bark at every noise that he goes He barks on. and then he chases squirrels. Don't forget. So as the knocking continued, she finally did decide to call the police. After how many days? I don't know. She's thinking that someone was trying to break in and steal from her. Soon after, the woman could hear a faint voice asking her, open the door. 
Open Come the on. door. Open the door. Open the door. But her daughter, eh, thank you, said don't. <laughs> Advised her not to answer it and to please ignore the voice. Well, how'd you like that at our door? Because it's kind of, uh, you can kind of see through it. Oh, yeah. And there's a, <laughs> you already got the light on. There's just three o'clock in the morning. Somebody's not going to see. Would that be? No, because when people knock on our door, they hear the slide of a German shepherd <laughs> and this, as it runs this, into the door and it can't it. stop. And then, <laughs> I have seen people back up so fast down those stairs. It's fun to watch. It is so fun to watch because they back up and then they yell to me from halfway down the walk. Would you like to buy some candy? <laughs> The poor, the poor Girl Scouts. Come on up. Girl Scouts are brave, though. They stand there. Yeah. They don't back off. They're, They're like, nah, that's fine. There's a door there. Just just Max. They're really brave. They know Max anyway. So the woman looked outside her apartment window because she just can't mind her own business. And she's stunned to find out it, it was a boy with his mouth wide open and barely moving as he talked. Oh, uh, that door. Oh, yeah, that's weird. I wonder what he said. Oh. Oh, my God. oh, she took a photo. No, this isn't. This is. Oh. Well, I guess this is supposed to be him with the Elmer Fudd on. Yeah. Well, no. See, this is his mouth wide open, and he's barely moving his mouth. <laughs> oh, and no, oh. Uh, oh, and no, oh. It just looks like he's yawning to me. Um, she and then proceeded to take a photo thought. of the boy who was knocking on the door. Once she snapped the photo, the boy looked right at her, walked away, never to be seen again. Is that the actual photo? That's what they're saying. Yeah. There he is. He's right there. It's just a, you know, it's weird. I don't know what he's doing out at 3 a.m. Um, yeah, well, it, the police would be called. I wouldn't let him in, but I would definitely call the police. Stay right there while the police get here. Did you already go down that side? Okay. Yeah, we've got right. this right here. Okay. So what's next? Sorry, everybody. You have to listen to our instructor to each other. Now we have Harold. He's a 16-year-old teenager from Virginia. He's walking to his home when he saw a boy leaning on a nearby fence. Huck Finn? Do you have a paintbrush? Tom Sawyer. Is it Huck Finn or Tom Sawyer? I thought that was Tom Huck Sawyer. Finn, yeah, Tom. One of them convinces the other one to. Yeah. He had to paint the fence, but he calls the other, all of his friends in a paint. Because this is so much fun. Same, yeah. Same one this who, is a lot of fun. Same one who charged his friend like a quarter to see his you know, blistered toe or something. I yeah. Know. I remember reading those when I was a kid. Harold was startled by the, sudden, the boy's sudden appearance, but nonetheless tried to introduce himself. Harold's a polite kid. Yeah. Hello, Harold said to the boy, but the boy never replied. Harold, already frightened, decided to turn around and leave when the boy finally spoke to him. The boy told Harold that he wanted to accompany Harold on his walk home. I doubted that's what he said. I, I would like to accompany you on your walk home. <laughs> you never know. Maybe they're and extremely wanted, polite and, wanted and well spoken. To take him to his home. This is when Harold noticed that the boy had soulless, pitch black eyes. Upon seeing the boy's eyes, every instinct in his body told him to run for his life. <laughs> Harold, stunned by what he was witnessing, along with the feeling like the boy seemingly was able to read his mind, told Harold not to run away and strongly repeated that Harold was going to take him to his house. This snapped Harold back into reality and got his yeah. heart <laughs> Yeah, I'd have been yeah. running a little bit before that, but yeah. Yeah, well, at least walking quickly away, going, yeah, hi, yeah, yeah you go ahead and yeah, live on your fence, I'll be going, yeah, yeah, yeah bye. Have a good day. Yeah. Um, he claimed that the child let out a loud, screechy scream like a bobcat. You mean like the kids from up the street? The kids from up the street yesterday. Oh, that a was scream? Do bobcats scream? That was a 12-hour birthday party, people. 12 <laughs> hours with a bouncy castle and a pool. 12 hours. Deb is really upset at the neighbors oh. because they got a new pool and pools are supposed to be fun but there's a screamer but yeah and one of the days two girls i think they have two girls right oh, do we know i don't know uh, we don't we're not really close to these neighbors but they're two doors up and they're i thought the splashing would be something that would annoy oh, me no, splashing is splashing. Fine. it's just that one child that screams one child and little girls just sometimes and i i've they, got three boys so i never had any of my boys that let out any kind of noise like that would be like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. No, this <laughs> so, thing, I mean, happy. Nobody's sister. telling it to be quiet. That's the problem. Oh. I'm sorry, telling and, her to be quiet. And it never got hoarse. 
That's um, loud. So he said his he was um, he was about to turn around and see what happened when he heard the you know screechy screech, but um, couldn't quite you know muster the okay, courage to turn. Okay, do you cat screech? Yes. Okay. But one of the things I've always been told is when you're running away, don't look back. It slows you down. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like racing. Yeah. So he said you know he couldn't muster the courage to turn around and just kept running, which is a smart thing to do. Um, and then when he got home, his parents believed him. So quickly, dad, you know, gets a gun and begins searching for this black-eyed child. That's so he gets a gun and starts searching for the little, kid. You little bobcat screeching brat. And um, I would he, probably do, if my kid came back all freaked out, I would probably, I probably would, I wouldn't brandish the thing, but I'd have it with me. Yeah. And, um, you know, because it's really kind of weird. And then I think the, when, but the really the, what well, did see, he, yeah. Dad got his gun. Mom took Carol to go visit a priest. Oh. Because she thinks this is the devil. Well, okay. So, <laughs> that, 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 that I guess maybe, maybe he needs to be purged of the black-eyed child. I don't know what that means. And now we have the gas station. And if we were to take a shot every time this article says gas station. <laughs> okay, take a shot. We'll we be would, hammered. We would never we get hammered. out of here alive. We'd be hammered at, hammered at the end. They make sure that you know this happens in a gas station. Okay, what happened at the gas station? It's November 12th. Or excuse me, it's November of 2012 at a gas station. I was going to say, where is it at? Where it's at a gas station. In, in Louisiana. Louisiana. When things began to feel creepy at a local gas station. <laughs> That's two shots. Two shots, Deb. The power went out at 3 a.m. At the gas station. And the attendant <laughs> working there used his cell phone to locate the gener generator in the back to get the power working again. They have a generator at a gas station. However, the That's backup generator at the gas station wasn't working efficiently. And it only worked in certain areas of the gas station. Yeah, you got it. You know, replace the gas every once in a while. Such as the parking lot and the cashier area. Well, you ain't going to take money. <laughs> That's right. Park. I can take uh, Did the pumps work? It doesn't <laughs> say. Um, but um, the entire area. What's left? The uh, pumps, of the, the gas cashier, station. and the parking lot. Remained in utter darkness. And um, as the attendant was doing his daily duties, he had noticed barely visible movement in the darkness and trying to piece together what he was looking at noticed three different children on bikes riding towards the gas station the children made a stop and stared at the attendant through the door the children staring at him creeped him out but then he thought nothing of it other than the fact that it was too late at night for them to be riding alone what time was, was it 3 a.m <laughs> Well, is, is it, this a 3 a.m.? Like, this wasn't 3 a.m. Like, yeah, no, yeah, it is. The power went the out. Last one, what is this, 3 a.m.? Well, yeah, you notice 3 a.m. is a big time because that's when I always wake that's up. That's when I wake up too. It's a weird, it's weird. It's a weird time of the night. Anybody out there wake up at 3 a.m.? We wake up at 3 a.m. a lot. Yeah, that's the time. Yeah, the house is quite haunted. We better get those paranormal people up from Auburn down and have a look around. <laughs> see, if this, <laughs> see if this place is haunted. Nobody's dying. Will you move if it's haunted? No, but nobody's dying here. Yeah. Well, a couple dogs. Well, that's, that's what I think's been pushing me in the game room. Think I think that's Bucky? Dog, Bucky's pushing my chair playing around. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, a couple dogs have died here. I forgot about that. Um, he opened the door and asked the kids if they were okay. The girl quickly answered and asked him if she could use the phone. Because that's what ghosts do. As he was about to hand over his cell phone, he noticed her eyes were completely black. She refused and demanded to use the real phone and pointed towards the phone in the office. Why is the gas station open at 3 a.m.? Well, it's a 24-hour gas station. Oh, is it? Is it? Oh, I don't 2012. Know. I'm assuming. Um, okay. He didn't understand why she only wanted to use the landline because, you know, what the hell? Well, I'm not going to um, give her my cell phone. Well, he was going to hand her the cell phone, but she wanted to come into the office and use the landline. Oh, no. So, I mean, I'd rather, you know, lose my cell Ghosts phone. Ghosts need that line. Have you ever seen that, 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 like, the haunted episode of, I don't know if it's the Outer Limits or Twilight Zone, where the Billy Moomy was getting calls from his grandmother, and uh, she was dead. 
<laughs> and it right. turns out at the end, um, he, you know, spoiler alert, the, the phone line fell in the graveyard and was sitting oh, cool. on, do you remember that? Know. It, it had fallen. On her we'll have to watch that episode, it's really cool. It fell on the light, on the grave of the grandmother. Oh, as they, how convenient. Yeah, it was, so she was talking to him from the grave through the, through the telephone line. It was really kind of cool. Okay. Um, so now you have it. So That's now uh, he didn't understand why she wanted to use the landline. Um, he shouted at the kids to leave off my lawn, you kids. Get Slammed the door lawn. and locked it shut. The children then began to hang around a little longer, just staring at him with their soulless black eyes. After some time, they just hopped back up on their little bikes and left. Wouldn't you just be like, what's... Are you guys related? You all have the same eyes. You all, well, yeah, see, look at You know, eyes. can you tell me about these eyes? Mike, you know, I have a tendency to ask a lot of questions. Yeah, that's, you know, hopefully they don't come around and kill you. Like, <laughs> come on in, kids. Well, I'm going to bring them in the house, but I'm going to ask some questions. Okay, let me ask you guys a couple questions. Are you related? Because you all have alien-like dark black eyes. And so, you know, maybe, maybe yeah. tell me a little bit about that. So Mr. Attendant was all, you know, ooh, I'm going to look at the security footage of the encounter, not oh. remembering that they got no power. <laughs> so there was no security footage of this. So he told the gas station owner that, you know, that's why money's missing because, you know, these kids can't Yeah, control. I think he took some money. This probably has something to do with that. Okay, now we're moving up into the internet with, um, we have a Reddit user by the name of not the real Austin. <laughs> My name is not the real Austin. That's just his handle. It's not his name. <laughs> and his encounter with the black eyed children. Not the real says, I don't believe not the real. Not the real. Mr. Austin. I'm a believer in many things paranormal. With BEKs. The B E K's. Whoa, kids. they got him. I know he's all whoa. he's all abbreviating and stuff. Being one of the stories I thought was an urban legend. Until early this morning. I'm the assistant manager of the Pizza Hut in my town. <laughs> and mind okay, you, I used to think that was a big deal when I was a kid. Wow, you're the assistant manager? Yeah, uh-huh. That's a big deal, Pizza Hut. And my GM has me on the late night shift, so he doesn't have to. Because you know how those managers are. You do the late night shift. Yeah, I know how that is. It was do little, my stuff. It was a little after 2 a.m. And around that time is when the external lights of the building cut off. Seems like that's when you know you need them the most. Leaving the parking lot. three in the morning? No, they were at 2 a.m. Oh, over oh, 2. Well, well, we'll be working for us three. Maybe there's a time. The road. Time difference? There's a time difference, yeah. <laughs> so the parking lot's almost pitch black. The driver and I were in the very back of the store, finishing up some dough prep. Dough prep, baby. And dishes, as we normally do. I like to say that I'm attuned to the paranormal, since I have witnessed many things throughout my 21 years my, yeah. of existing on this planet. While we were in a conversation about sales and what to prep... He doesn't explain about other things no, that have happened. No, we don't talk about anything else. Um, I started to feel unnerved. I ignored it due to anxiety and stressing. Over... <laughs> about making that dough. No, no. There, was, there was a homeless man making a scene a couple hours prior to close. It's scary because that never happens around happens here. More often here than any time. But that feeling didn't go away, so I made a, patr a patrol around the restaurant. I looked out the front doors, since the highway gives out fr a front a little bit of lighting, but there was nothing. I looked out the windows in the dining room, still nothing. By the time I see, yeah, by the time it doesn't know it's doing this again. And, see, it, it, it repeats there. Okay. I looked out the windows in the dining room, but still didn't see anything. So I, it wasn't until I decided to look out the drive through window that I saw it. Standing about three yards away from the window was a girl in a dress, barely illuminated by the lights that were no still pulling down outside. No comments about the dress this time. I didn't say a word. <laughs> she was pale and it had hair that fell just past her shoulders. As an adult, my first thought was, what is that kid doing out in 34 degree weather in the pouring rain? But then our eyes met and I saw that hers were a jet black color. I recoiled from the window and ran over to the safe to get my phone. We have to keep our phones locked up during business hours and I don't have to have my phone glued to me 24 seven. He's so self-righteous. Well, so I normally just leave it in there until I need it. Makes one of us. I know. <laughs> 
put down my phone? Are you kidding well, me? I can walk around. Bill Burr has a bit about how he, he goes, I challenge you to set your phone down and walk around the block without getting severe anxiety. Well, and he's kind of right. Anything could be happening. By the time I got my phone out and ran back to the drive through she wasn't there. And I didn't see her again for the entire time we were there. I know the stories say they come to the doors of homes and try to get in as long and as long as you don't invite them in, you're fine. This is a vampire thing, right? But she if yeah. you don't bring them in your house, yeah, you have to invite. Once them you in. invite them in, then you can't. Uh, well, you can't uninvite them. But what happens when you invite a vampire in? They they bite you. They come in. Well, I'm assuming they they're vampires. They're able to bite you. Bite you. So they can't bite you if you don't open the door and let them in. They don't fly through the window like a bat. I <laughs> I'm not sure why they say they're polite when they're you know killers, but. My first encounter was a demon. Was a de with a demon was with one that demon. with a demon was one that portrayed itself as a child. So who knows? I just had to post my story somewhere. My girlfriend thinks I'm crazy, and my general manager, who also believes in things such as this, is freaking out. Freaking yeah. out, I tell you. He's just freaking out. He's freaking out. So what's the deal with these things? I mean, so what? So, I mean, what is, I mean, we to, you haven't, or I, either you or I, before this came up and you, you found it, have really never, you haven't had any experience with this? Well, we look, no, I have, I had no idea. I never even heard of this Black Eyed Children movie that's supposedly out there. I guess we'll have to, we're going to have to, we'll have to give movie. it a shot. See. Generally, I kind of just like to go through the interviews and things before I watch a, a movie and get it. You would, as a comparison, maybe, but you yeah, know. I well, it's a Kickstarter movie, so you know, I'm sure it'll be. It probably, very like done. you said, it started with that and then it went crazy. So then we looked at some Wikipedia. We looked at you know just to kind of get some background that says um, they're mysterious creatures, supposedly resemble kids between the ages of six and sixteen. Those are very specific ages, right there. So you have to be you know between kindergarten and sophomore year in high school. Once you get past that, then you can't be a kid anymore. Does your Apple Watch tell you to breathe when you're breathing anyway? It, it, yes, <laughs> it does tell me. And more, usually, I don't even have to think about breathing. I'm almost so intelligent, I can breathe without thinking about it. I can almost breathe about, without thinking. It's kind of weird. I get that a couple times a day, and I'm wondering. You know. Mine tells me all kinds of things. Like, you need to close your circles. No, oh boy. Yeah, it's very demanding. And sometimes after I walk the dog for like three hours, it'll say, you're off to a good start. Yeah. And I want to tell it, you go to hell. I am done. <laughs> I've already been out three hours. I am done. What that is mean? a good start for you. What do you mean start? <laughs> I, would, I would now like to sit down and watch Netflix for a couple hours. Yeah. But it'll tell me, please get up and walk around at least 10 minutes every hour. <laughs> Um, so these, um, they appear only in the night. And they're breathless and monotone. Yes, they, and they want to use the bathroom, make a phone call, get a ride home, or grab something to eat. Those are all Seems things, reasonable. Those are all things we normally do. Well, now kids don't, I mean, now, even in that, like 2012, you tell your kids, don't go talk to strangers. You do not ask to go in people's you don't, houses. Yeah, especially when you'll get in a car with a stranger. I want to. Or, like, I mean, it would be highly unusual to have a kid unless they were running away from yeah. something scary to um, want to get into a car or go into your house. And which I wouldn't, because of liability issues. Yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, I would even state that, hey, black eyed kid, hey, liability issues. I'm I not. I can't do it. Putting you in my house and then having you, you know, I don't know. It's, it's weird. So no, it's not happening. Um, theories about the black eyed children variously claim them to be vampires, extraterrestrials, interdimensional beings. Or even a form of demon. I think they're all of the above. So in 2013, Black Eyed Children Fever hit the internet. It's like Saturday, and I missed that Just too. like Saturday Night Fever, but I Black Eyed Children too. Fever. Um, do -do 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 there was a two-minute video. Do -do 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 oh, I'm just going to read. Was that Baby Shark? That was Baby Shark. <laughs> um, so um, there was a two-minute episode of... Uh, Weekly Strange, featuring a look at these strange put putative beings um, on the internet entertainment section of MSN website. But as the Inquisitor noted, the video um, 
video sources and the information, they were far from convincing. Yes. Um, the brief video looks like an amateur hour version of Unsolved Mysteries, well, this is very <laughs> catty, which details the phenomenon and names name drops a handful of conspiracy cryptology website. Wow. Google black-eyed children and you're not much better off. The first handful of results belong to the examiner and mysterious universe, and none of them exactly take what we'd call a fully skeptical view of the subject. Well, so well I'm just saying for everybody out there to just kind of now that it's be careful at two and three in the morning. Don't let these. Well, that's kind of. We don't know what they do once they get in. We haven't once. Has anybody had one since? So you get in, and then what? What happens after they're inside? What happens after they get in your car? And what well, happens after like they're in we, your house? We only we only know about the people who said no because the people who said yes can't they're, say anything. They can't say anything anymore. They've been possessed. So this person says file black eyed children under the same heading as Bigfoot. So they're right. They're real. They're interdimensional. <laughs> they're real. They're interdimensional, like Bigfoot. They come and go. They come and, and go. they're aliens. So they're like Bigfoot and they're aliens. And then we looked at Snopes. So Snopes says, not surprisingly, the appearance of the Black Eyed Children video on MSN coincided with the release of Black Eyed Kids, an urban legend based horror film. So. Hmm. So we've <laughs> so this is kind of where it starts. Shocking. It's kind of like the Blair Witch Project. How yeah. that you know yeah. they had news stories and so um, Vancouver director Nick Hagen's horror series Haunted Sunshine Girl continues to be a hit on YouTube with more than 10 million video views and 20,000 subscribers. The movie Black Eyed Kids was a spinoff of that series and has been in the works for about a year. What series was it? Haunted Sunshine Girl. I know. I've never I've heard never of it. I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. What was it on? Is it a YouTube thing? It, oh, it is, is YouTube. It is a YouTube thing, yeah. It takes the characters from Sunshine on an adventure as they investigate the origins of the occult legend of the Black Eyed Kids. That's interesting. The story in the film is fictional, but reports of Black Eyed Kids sightings, especially in and around Portland, are very real, Hagen said. We are so going to get you a new chair. Yeah, the squeaky. Black Eyed Kids is an urban legend that's been floating around on the internet for years. I always thought it was fascinating, said Hagen. It's been a fun legend to play with, said Mercedes Rose, who co-produced the film with Hagen. We're the first film group to do anything with Black Eyed Kids legend. Uh, we're excited for people, to, we're super excited for people to see it. It's so creepy. In the film, Sunshine, played by a teen actress who asked that her name be withheld to protect from online stalkers, oh, wow. has Jeez. a friend contact her after somebody it's he not knows in the vanishes. Credits. I guess not, no. <laughs> She's an actress that doesn't want to be recognized for anything. Suspecting that the black guy kids <laughs> that's has something that's to do burning. with it. Sunshine and others go to Portland to look for video proof. They find the black eyed kid, but they discover something a lot more evil. Than they ever managed, and they try to get out alive. Well, we're going to have to check that out. Yeah, that'll be fun. We'll definitely check that out. So, with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of the Alien Pro Podcast. Deb, thanks, about Doctor Bill. I believe will be back next week. He's traveling again. The traveling Doctor Bill. So, uh, hopefully, he'll be back with us. We're hoping to get back on get back on track with uh, Ed Rupelt's um, UFO book. Oh, look, your bookmark has gotten farther Pro along. So guys, I know, we're you almost... You guys are making progress. <laughs> yes, we're, yeah, the reports on unidentified flying objects were uh, trudging through, and it's it's really interesting what I tell people when as we go through and visit with, uh, when we go through our craft fairs and things we do that you're roll your eyes it's like well, if you're, you're interested in aliens and, uh, <laughs> here we go deb has to take the dog and leave the area yeah. so uh in most i hardly ever find anyone that says no, no they always yeah, find they it everybody's fascinated fascinated with the subject although you know with the report on ufos where um we think they're real we're just having trouble actually finding out how real you know what you know we it isn't landing in the backyard. You're not able to put your hand on it. You can't open it up. Yeah. You can't see what's inside. No, it's not scaring the hell out so, of the dog. Yeah, it's not scaring the dog. So, um, you know, we're 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 getting through, and what this does, I don't, I, um, it enables us to 
examine the Project Blue Book uh, history with Ed Ruppelt and uh, Heineck and uh, see what, you know, how they uh, moved along in the 50s portion of UFO um, related incidents and um, how it was reported and what they saw, what the ones weren't, were ruled out and what ones they can say they positively were UFOs, but they could say that they, you know, something was going on there. It's like a 20%, 20% of them, they can't explain it all. So I get people, um, and, you know, that I talk to and they ask, you know, are they real? I said, I, we haven't been able, you know, we know area 50, we talk about area 51 where they had four or five of them. And, you know, that, um, you know, Lazar was there and he was working on, I mean, that was this, his story and that we embrace that. Cause that's, that's one of the only ones we can, that's as close as we can get to someone who says, I can actually see, I've seen UFOs and I've seen aliens. Um, so we're, uh, we're trudging our way through that. So, um, we'll wrap it up. Thanks for listening to the latest episode of the Alien Pro Podcast. We welcome comments, questions, or requests to Alien Pro Podcast at gmail.com. Visit us on Facebook at alienprobe.net, Twitter at alienprobepod. And now we have the QR code, which will, a good suggestion, we'll post uh, the QR um, even though the web, you know, our, our sites have the, um, our sites have, you know, our episodes on them, but you can, you can QR and then you can go right into Spotify and check them out. Thanks again uh, to our senior producer, Robert Anthony, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.